hello YouTube welcome back spaceman here with you I'm smoking my uh, Missouri Meerschaum um, I'm just thinking it's an original bent that's all it is and what I'm smoking today is one of my favorites which is a Greater Kansas City Pipe Club Selection Chocolate Silk. It's an aromatic blend, chocolate, very good. And having a cup of Maxwell House, original roast. Well, in this video, I'm featuring this. This is the book, Weird New Jersey. I used to live in New Jersey. And they had a publication there called Weird New Jersey. Why? Because there were some weird things in New Jersey, especially where I lived. The, the two guys were Mark Skierman and Mark Moran, okay? These two guys scouted out, they went around and scouted out and located all the weird stuff in New Jersey. The weird places, the weird uh, phenomenon in certain areas. Um, the so then eventually they released this book, which is very interesting to say the least. Now, these two guys are right here. They're pictured here. I believe this is in Asbury Park. Um, not sure, but it, it could be Asbury Park. Um, in the introduction, note that they write, New Jersey, the most American of all states. It has everything from wilderness to the mafia. All the great things and all the worst. For example, Route 22. Uh, I don't know much about Route 22. But what I do know about are the UFOs that I've experienced coupled with the UFOs that were witnessed by other people and a house in particular and this would fall under the section of the book of personalized properties now whether any of you remember this or not there was a place, there was a man called George Daner who created this place during the Depression called the Palace of Depression, where he took numerous cars, junk cars, parts of cars, tires, you name it, and he put together this structure, kind of like a castle or a oh, here's a picture of it this should give you an idea right here okay there's some pictures of it um I was only this was like way before my time I actually saw the remnants the end remnants of it now There's a house, okay? Which was next to the house that my sister lived in for the late 60s into the early 70s. I want to say like 71, 72. 71 to be precise, probably. This house was, was like... 
um, two houses down to the south of my sister's house on the same side. Two, so there were two properties down. This is the house. It was a stone house, and it had a lot of statues. It had a lion. It had a, had a uh, I guess, this kind of like fountain. I don't know if this fountain worked. Uh, it had a Statue of Liberty. Um, very interesting place I remember as a child growing up. Um, so, what I do remember... Okay, well, you know, originally, I'm going to mention this first, okay? Um, George Arbuckle was the former owner, and um, he created the statue in the 1930s, was a plumber and an eccentric. It was said he dabbled in spiritualism and astrology and held seances. Um, he often debated psychology with scholars from the Violin Training School. The Great Depression left Arbuckle with a lot of time on his hands to indulge his whims. And he rebuilt the 1883 frame house and five acre parcel of land he bought in 1919 into a remarkable landmark. He covered the house with concrete blocks, initial, initialing and dating each section. Unlike his neighbor George Daner, who assembled the Palace of Depression out of junk, Arbuckle adorned his grounds with beautiful things. Lion, lion, statu, lion statuary, winding trails, sculpted archways, and of course a scaled-down Lady Liberty. He also built a greenhouse where he grew prize-winning amaryllis plants now after our buckles death in 1948 the house property and statuary were sold the family of the current owner raymond let's see if i can get this name right Sot, Sotnik, Sotnichuk has owned the property since 1950 thanks to Sotnichuk, the cumberland county planning board has placed the property on its register of Historic buildings. The Sotnichuk family remains loyal to the vision of George Arbuckle. Now, there's a particular rumor, which I don't know, it's an urban legend about this place that goes quite a ways back. Probably, when did I say this house was built? Um, you know, was it the 30s, 40s, well, what do you know, I went and forgot, let's go back, okay, um, well, he created the statue, George Arbuckle created the statue in, in the 30s, and owned the home for 70 years. Now, there's an urban legend that goes back that says that at one time there were gangsters or mobsters that lived there, the mob, the mafia, whatever, and they had a, a tunnel which if they went into the basement if they were being chased by their co their enemies or their uh foes they would go into the basement open this secret uh vault entrance and there was a tunnel that supposedly went underground uh through the backyard and through the property line all the way back underground to the very next street and out maybe out of out of drain I, I out of the ground i don't know but they would escape that way was what from what i understood it was that would be spring road which was the road uh right behind that now when i was a child um i stayed at my sister's house and my brother-in-law had a motorcycle 
In fact, it was an all-state. I don't know if you remember them. She'd take us for rides in the late 60s back through those woods on the trails and everything. It was kind of an interesting uh, place, to say the least. Um, there's a lot of interesting things about Vineland. Uh, it's creepy, creepy things. And there's one particular case which you can do the research and find out of uh, Satan's cult activity or witchcraft or cult activity in that area was very predominant at that time and uh, still seems to be to this day. Um, in 1970, there was a cult killing an assisted suicide, and um, you can research that if you would like to. It's in Vineland, New Jersey. You can go online and research that. Um, so, was it a strange place? Yes, it was a strange place to grow up in. Um, during the early 90s, I had many UFO sightings in that area and into the early 2000s, which I will get into in another video, and a couple of brushes with what I called the men in black. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit later on in another video to come. It's a little bit creepy. Um, if you're interested in it, you might want to check out Weird New Jersey, the book. Uh, this book retails for <laughs> I really don't know what I paid for it tell you the truth 1995 I don't know if it's still in print but shortly thereafter they actually um, came up with uh, these two guys wrote books about ended up writing books about all the different states and, and actually exploring all the weird things about all the other states. So you had weird Florida, you had weird whatever, you know, Arkansas, I guess. Well, I don't know how many states they have them on, but they feature other states now. So it's an interesting read. Uh, if you're into paranormal, so I just thought I'd mention that. So if you're into that, give it a go and see what you can find. So, have fun. Smoke your pipe. Do whatever you're going to do. Have your coffee and I'll check you out in the next video. Cheers.